I'm Amy Zaley with the Jerusalem Connection Report Friday Red Alert for April 21. Unfortunate events on college campuses. Just recently at the University of Michigan in Dearborn where there is a significant Middle Eastern population that includes Muslims, Christians, and Jews, a young co-ed who is in the process of converting to Judaism reported to authorities that she witnesses she witnessed two people dressed in Muslim garb, distributing parking violation tickets onto cars throughout campus. These so-called tickets that were labeled parking violation were on very official letterhead and could alarm a student when they're approaching their car that they might have committed a violation. Upon reading the violation, one would find uh, inaccurate composition about the and accusations against Israel, a celebration of the anti-Israel apartheid week that was occurring, as well as uh, advertising for a, a speech um, a, about Israeli territory issues sponsored by the Students for Justice in Palestine. The young woman was concerned because the content in the parking violations also contained inaccuracies and she feared that students without a proper background might actually think these things were true. Moreover, the parking violation um, event happened a couple weeks after the Students for Justice for Palestine successfully passed a BDS measure within the student body, thus making the atmosphere on campus ripe with anti-Israeli uh, sentiment and Jewish students feeling uh, knowingly uncomfortable. This event is largely uh, similar, eerily similar, to the eviction notices that were posted throughout college campuses in New England, Connecticut, and New York with the same type of fodder and advertisements, but instead of on cars, they were taped to people's doors. On April 10th, in the Algeminer uh, newspaper, it chronicled exactly why BDS measures do not work and actually hurt Palestinians, the very folks, the SJP and other groups claim to want to help, and that in fact there's no documented uh, BDS measure that has ever changed an Israeli policy or changed or improved the conditions of the Palestinians in the region. Within each measure that BDS takes to choke investment and patronage of Israeli goods and services, the only result is that all the area folks suffer and Israel's economy does not merely benefit nor burden the Jews in particular, but all the people that live there and participate in their economy. A Forbes analysis by Carrie Sheffield researched the same conclusion. The numbers speak for themselves, she writes. Israel's population of 8.3 million has a GDP of 291 billion. The Palestinian territory's population is 4.1 million. 11.3 billion is their GDP. In 2012, Palestinian sales to Israel accounted for 81% of its GDP exports, but less than 1% of Israel's GDP. So where the BDS measures might have seemed to make a particular uh, um, movement forward in their own interests, in fact, it has backfired. For example, the seven-year campaign against the Israeli cosmetic company called Ahava, which was located in the West Bank, the boycott and uh, divestment measures were so severe that they ended up closing the factory in the West Bank and relocating it inside Israel's current national borders. Well, that made the cosmetic company's outcome just fine, but it actually made the inhabitants of the West Bank of all ethnic origins suffer the loss of job and infrastructure. In a 2014 study released, uh, it proved that Palestinian workers actually proved uh, uh, they would rather take Israel jo jobs from Israeli employers, not only because the wages and working conditions were better and are better, they also fall under Israeli employment law. Whereas the Arab or Palestinian business owners don't offer as competitive wages, good working conditions, and there is literally nearly no regulation at all to, to protect workers. So where BDS measures may, in some people's mind, have some sort of short-term effect, positive effect in their view, the ultimate victim is the Palestinian. And the SJP activists and those touring New York City and the UN and various European uh, state houses, none of these folks have stopped long enough to look past their own hatred for Israel and their desire for it not to exist to see the suffering that they actually imposed. 
and the few that actually do recognize this claim the Palestinians are acceptant of this burden in order to get the end goal, which is to eliminate Israel. This web of activities may seem complicated, but it's really quite a straight line, and the victims lie on either side of it. I personally buy Israeli products not only because they're good products, but I can support not only the Israeli business owners, but the Arabs, Jews, and Christians that benefit from working in those factories, uh, increasing sales revenue, and participating in that commerce. Those who identify as Palestinian or any other ethnicities, their quality of life is enhanced by my contribution by purchasing those products. And they, they benefit for, as being contributors of those products as employees and other types of salespeople. And as such, their families will also benefit with a better quality of life. I encourage you all to buy Israeli when you can. And you're also going to be helping Palestinians at the same time. And that's a good thing. Shavua Tov, have a great week, and Shabbat Shalom.